Hello and welcome to Saki Tech. So in today's video we'll be doing a comparison between the Jelly Bean 4.2 and the iOS 6.01. So the iOS 6.01 is running on my Apple iPad 4 and the uh, Jelly Bean 4.2 is running on my Nexus 7. So this is not a device to device comparison. It is a software to software comparison. We're not going to be running any kind of speed tests in this video maybe a little bit but not too much mostly we will be concentrating on the differences between the software operating systems okay so let's get started okay so the first thing that I want to go over is the lock screen with the iPad you get the basic lock screen that you have had since the iPhone was released um, nothing new here except for the picture frame which is recently new you can press this and get your pictures shuffled for you on your screen kind of like a screensaver if you have it docked it would be perfect other than that you get nothing else you slide to unlock you go to the home page with the nexus 7 it's a little different even when it comes to unlocking the screen you get all kinds of options you do get slide to unlock you also get a you know a live widget this is actually a widget and you can put more widgets uh, as far as jelly bean 4.2 is concerned so i have an email here and I have the clock right there. Okay, and you do have the life wallpaper in the back. So the lock screen, I think, looks better on the Jelly Bean, and it gives you more options to unlock. You can have a pattern unlock, you can have a face detection unlock, you can have a pin unlock, and you can have custom downloadable unlocking methods uh, through the Google Pay Store. So that's a lot more customization. Okay, let's go to the home screen in both. This is going to be the next area we're going to look at. So after we unlock our devices, we are welcomed to the home screen. And here, once again, Android shows off its customization capabilities. Instead of just having icons for apps or folders uh, on your screen, you see clocks, you see weather widgets. You know, you have I have a YouTube live widget here. I have a Flipboard widget and an email widget. So you see all kinds of different things on your home screen on your Android, on your Jelly Bean, uh, as opposed to the standard display that you get with the iOS. So this allows the Nexus 7, or let's just say Jelly Bean, allows for some very specific personalization and uh, customization options. And this enhances the usability of your device, since you can have a quick and up-to-date preview of the things that, that are important to you. So I like to see my email right away. I, I want to see what new videos were uploaded under my channel for my subscriptions. And I like to see what news is running on my Flipboard. So you, can, you don't get that with the iOS. Okay. And before I move to the no notification bars on the, both of these devices, quickly take a look at one of the you know most uh, amazing customization options out there, live wallpaper. So in the background, I have a live... Oops, I have a live wallpaper. That's a Galaxy. Okay. On this one, all you can have is static pictures. So, again, this looks way better to me than this one. Even though overall I prefer the iPad 4, I, I, I'm just at a loss as to why they haven't caught up with this, you know, superb customization that Android offers. I mean, you can tweak this device to look exactly the, the way you want it. You can change the colors on the, on the widgets. Uh, you can move these, let's see, oops, you can move these widgets around, you can resize them on Jelly Bean, you know, you have full resizing capabilities, and, um, you know, you can change the colors to match the background color, you can change the fonts if you install third-party launchers, um, you know, a lot of customization. So that is the home screen, let's go move on to the notification bars on both of these guys. Now with the Android tablets, at least this Nexus 7, uh, you have two of them. One of them actually has a picture for you. You know, you can control the brightness settings. You can go directly into the settings from here. Uh, you, it shows you what wireless access point you're connected to. You can lock, unlock, auto rotate. Uh, the battery meter is right here. And you can, you know, a bunch of other options. So this, this is number one. So these are options on this side, on the right side. On the left side, you get the actual notifications. So if you install a program, it shows up right here. Your emails show up right here. And then you can pinch 
and close up notifications that are expandable. So you can put them up and down. They sold it nine new messages, two new messages. Chase Mobile was installed. Now, if you want to get rid of the notifications here, all you do is swipe them. Swipe them away, left or right. So I don't need this notification. I don't need this notification. I love it. With the Apple iPad, you get notifications for your calendar, you know, uh, dictionary. Not there, there are apps that allow for notifications that show up on your notification bar. So you see them right here. And you can dismiss them, but you can dismiss them as a group. Okay. The notifications from the same application are grouped under the same application. So if Game Center has five notifications, they'll all show under the Game Center. And I can dismiss it by clicking this X button up top. Oop. If you click it, it will launch the application. Okay, so dismiss by X. Oops, can't get that right. Dismiss by X. Woo, okay, it's probably the position that I'm in. Dismiss by X, okay? And um, with this guy, you can just dismiss them by swiping them around. You can also press and hold, and you can go directly to the app information where you can make other settings. Okay, so that's that. So again, notification bar. I think that the uh, Jelly Bean is way better than the iOS. You know, it's much more customizable. Uh, this is much more standard. Not that I don't like it. It's really smooth. But, yeah, okay. So that's the notification bar. Let's move on to the next category. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about is about the browsers. Now, I do have a separate video that actually compares the web page load times between the iPad 4 and the actual Nexus 7. And they're both running on Jelly Bean and iOS 6. So that's that's covered. Um, now, interestingly enough, Nexus 7 loads websites faster than the iPad 4. Go watch the video. I'll put the link in the description. And um, however, the actual experience of browsing, you know, pinching, zooming, just navigating is better on the iPad. But I'm not really concerned about that. These are two different classes of devices. Uh, so I'm going to put the link in the description for the web browser load comparison times video. Go watch that and so you can get some more in-depth review of the browser experience on both the Jelly Bean and the iOS. Okay, so let's move on to the next category. Well, before I actually move on, let me just launch the browsers here. Chrome browser on the Jelly Bean and Safari browser on the iOS. So it's all the basic, same stuff. You know, you get tabs on this one here, new tab, new tab. You get tabs on both of these guys, new tab right here, the address bar, bookmarks, both of them have bookmarks, and uh, cloud services um, are available on both. Okay, so this is just, um, it just comes down to um, which browser is more fluid and responsive overall and you should make the comparison on equally equipped devices which these two are not okay so go back to home and let's go and look at the app store so the one thing you will notice with the app store when you go to google play store now uh, just go to home home google play Everything that's available in the Google Play Store, movies, music, apps, magazines, and uh, books, are aggregated on the home page in one you know, universal menu. Now, with the App Store, if you want to buy music, you go to iTunes. If you want to buy apps, you go to App Store. Now, let's just do the apps here. Let me go to Featured. Okay, so that's the App Store for the um, for the um, the iOS, and here's the App Store for the uh, Jelly Bean. So let's search for a Facebook application, right? As I type Facebook, what you can do is you get the result for the app directly on the top, or you can click the next search button and search for all apps that have Facebook in it. And let's do that. And what you get, you can go to apps, movies, music, books. So I'm just going to go to apps. And then you can scroll through all the available applications with the keyword Facebook in them. 
I like this better than the um, App Store and the iTunes because if you go to iTunes, search for Facebook, and click Facebook, first off, you don't get the option to go to directly to the Facebook application. You have to go through the search results. And, you know, they're pretty nice. Now, the presentation of the search results is better on the iPad because you get a little box of information for each app. Okay. On the iPhone, I think it looks a little different. On the iPad, this is how it looks, and I like it. On the iPhone, you actually get one application at a, at per page, and you have to swipe next, next, next. On Jelly Bean mobile devices, like a cell phone device, you can do the same thing you're doing right here. So that is why I said I like this more. Actually, on the on the actual tablets, the App Store is not that bad at all. Okay, so let's exit the App Store. Now the next thing I want to talk about is the keyboard. Jelly Bean 4.2 introduced a really nice keyboard. It's called Gesture Typing. Let me show it to you. Now the iPad does not have it, so let's just pull up the keyboards on both. Now let's go to Google Chrome. Okay, so what you can do is, let's say I want to go to um, wallet.com. So on the iPad you type it dot com right now here gesture based typing you can actually swipe your fingers over the letters you want to use and the keyboard predicts the word you're trying to type so let's see wallet did you see that wallet dot com already so let's do one more let's go to produce dot com so you type it in here. Here you can actually, so that's P R O D U C E, produce dot com. Okay, so that is the one feature that I did want to show you guys about the keyboard that came with the new um, Jelly Bean 4.2 update. Now, the um, as far as responsiveness goes, iPad has one of the most responsive keyboards I've ever seen and I prefer this over anything else for just typing okay I just love the way it responds to your fingers uh, that's just my personal like though doesn't mean I'm an Apple fanboy uh, okay so let's move on to the next option okay so the next section I want to go over is the multitasking with the iPad you get the standard double click you get all your running apps right here you can tap and hold and exit the ones you don't need and then you can also switch between applications the same way so double click go to maps double click go to calendar tap to go home okay now with the uh, jelly bean you have this little button right here this is a this is not a hardware button this is a software button you just click it and here you can switch between different applications so let's switch to this the albums switch to the play store okay and if you want to get rid of them you just swipe them to the left or right left or right okay with this one you have to tap and hold and exit them this way this seems a little bit more quicker and efficient obviously so swipe 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 get them all out of the way go back to home okay okay now for some final comments on both of these different operating systems Jelly Bean versus iOS Jelly Bean is better when it comes to customization and personalization you get live widgets you know clock weather email news and um, YouTube video feed whatever it just gives you a better view of the things that are important to you and it even looks better because you get things like live wallpapers on the iPad all you get is static icons static folders and a static background so that is not very appealing as compared to something like this it feels like there's life here and that there's no life here but What's better on the iOS is it is overall a more fluid and a smoother running operating system. 
and as you switch between applications go online and just do stuff on the iPad you realize that it's a smoother working device and even the applications produced for it are more optimized okay as opposed to the applications here I can go to Google Store try to download an application that was designed for a phone and the same thing shows up on the Android tablet so you don't get nice graphics on it for example with the with the um, app store you get applications for iPad applications for the iPhone separate and all the iPhone applications do run on the iPad anyway well that's two of the biggest things that I can think of we went over the lock screen we went over the home screen we went over the notification bar a little bit about the browsers and a bunch of other things but um this is the end of the video uh, go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you like the videos and you want more because I'll be making more and um, click the like button give me a thumbs up if you like this video and uh, thank you for watching again have a good day guys